Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. In today's video, I have a model that I've been wanting to fly for a really long time. For those of you who don't know, when I started in RC a long, long time ago, when I started flying models when I was 13 years old, I flew helicopters. So today I have for you guys a V-22 Osprey coming from Banana Hobby. It's a five-channel model. It's really cool. I'm just going to get it out of the box here real quick and just show it to you. Uh, it comes in this white box. And uh, you can see what it looks like in here. We're going to get it on the mat to sort of show everybody see what it looks like. This is uh, coming from Banana Hobby, guys. Banana Hobby is making like a huge comeback in the hobby. They were the ones that started it all with foam models and so forth. And now they're actually bringing a lot of really great customer service and after sales support. So be looking for really cool things coming from uh, Banana Hobby. And I'm gonna be starting off, I'm gonna be showing you guys a lot of Banana Hobby models. Starting off with this V-22 Osprey. It's a four, uh, four cell powered airplane. It's uh, uh, five channels. And it comes in these four colors. Um, I'll throw it up here on the camera. You can see it comes in uh, four colors. It comes in two military. It comes in uh, the, the, like the Arctic camo, which they call the snow camo. And then it also comes in the, uh, the Coast Guard, which I'm gonna show you, which I think is like the most visible one because it's got colors on the prop tips and stuff, so it's pretty slick. And then it comes in two versions as well. It comes in a ready to fly, and it comes in an ARF format. And this is the ARF where you put your own receiver in it and go. But it's got its own flight stabilization system in it. It's got, um, um, you know, twin engine pods, you know, that, that actually, they pitch forward and back for pitch. They, they actually power up and down for, 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 for roll control. They, they actually turn opposite. The nacelles actually move to give you yaw control. And then you can transition to forward flight and then transition back into hovering again. So for me, being a former kind of RC helicopter pilot, I've been wanting to fly something like this for a really long time. And it's pretty darn scale. It has a, a like a lift fan in the tail. It's not really scale, but it, it keeps the stability going with the stabilization system. So it's, you know, relatively easy to fly. Now, I haven't flown it yet. We'll get it out of the box and we'll take a look at it here. But uh, again, guys, be looking for really cool stuff coming from Banana Hobby like this Osprey and there's going to be all sorts of big planes coming from Banana Hobby like 105 millimeter really nice jets with you know JB, JP uh, Hobby fans and JP Hobby equipment and stuff in some of them and, um, and also um, um, all kinds of propeller driven warbirds and stuff so really nice and again they're making a conscious effort uh, to uh, to really make their customer service um, like fantastic. So and I've been hearing good stuff so far, so we'll kind of see how it goes, but we're gonna get this thing out of the box. Guys, please do us a favor, like and subscribe to the channel if you guys like what you see here. Hit that notification bell in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Um, and most importantly, we found out recently the YouTube algorithm really likes it um, when you guys hit the like button. You can support us by hitting that like button as many times as, as you feel like it to like the video. And that makes sure that the YouTube algorithm sends our videos out for more people to see it and all that. So um, anyway, guys, we do appreciate you guys checking us all out. Also, um, I did so many videos of Banana Hobby planes uh, and stuff in the past that they're still selling there. So, you know, you can see them on the RC Informer YouTube channel, like the YF-23, the ATF Tactical Fighter, um, the, the B big B-25, all that stuff is available still at Banana Hobby, I think. And, and you guys can check those out on the RC Informer YouTube channel. I'm gonna put the links in the upper right-hand corner of this screen um, in the white information card. If you click on that, that'll drop down the menu. And you could see all those really cool older videos we made. And now the planes are coming out. And I think some of them are updated even too. I think they've improved you know, some of those LX and Blitz RC Works models. Um, and uh, we made some really great videos, so be sure to check those out. They're really cool. So anyway, guys, um, with that, let's, uh, let's get this out on the mat. I'm gonna lay it down, get all the parts, and we'll go over a thorough review and assembly of this really cool airplane coming from, or really cool model, I should say, coming from Banana Hobby. Okay guys, here's the uh, V-22 on the ceremonial mat here, all laid out. You can see everything's covered up, uh, everything's uh, packaged really nicely in here. Uh, just a quick look at the instruction manual again, and the four versions, the four colors that you can get this thing in. And then again, there are two versions. An RTF version, which I think comes with battery and transmitter, which would be in this slot right here. And then there's the, uh, the ARF version, which is what I have. I'm going to put my own receiver in it and so forth. Although I did get a battery for it in this one, which is not included, okay, 
with the, uh, uh, I think with the ARF version of this thing. And uh, I think there's a revised manual you can get online. I don't want to go into too much detail <laughs> about this thing, but here's the specs on it. It's a 700 millimeter wingspan. That's without the nacelles, so it's probably more like about 800 or something. Length's about 8 or 900, the weight. There's your battery you're going to use on this thing. It's a 4S. 2228. I, I hear it goes actually up to 3233 even, and the flight times will vary with the battery and so forth. So um, you got two 30 amp brushless ESCs, or uh, and then a single 20. That's for the like the fan. I call it the lift fan because it sounds cool. But there's a stabilization fan sort of in the tail. So there's three speed controllers in this thing, um, and then it has um, uh, nine gram. Uh, standard and 17 gram metal service. The 17 grams are the ones that that kind of tilt the the engine pods, the engine nacelles, uh, for where you need it. And then they just give you a basic assembly here, guys, and pre-flight checking. So um, all we're going to do is glue this tail on. I don't think the tail. Well, actually, I think it does have an elevator. We'll take a look at it. I'm, I'm not really 100% sure. It may have an elevator on it. Um, but the tail just glues right on here. Your uh, verticals glue right on. You just use a little uh, contact cement for that. And of course, as usual, guys, I will be using foam. Tech. It is the standard, the holy grail, and they do give you some glue in here actually, which is good epoxy, and we'll, I'll probably show you that. Maybe I will use the epoxy. We'll, we'll kind of see. And uh, flip into the next page. This actually has a hard cover on it. It's actually a very nice uh, hard cover manual. It's, it's pretty cool. And then you see the wings going on here with some screws, I guess, and then I haven't put this together, so I really don't know, and we'll get to that in this uh, video. There's the underside cabin, probably where the battery, actually maybe the battery I think actually goes in the cockpit, I think. But then you got your speed controller set up, your fan computer, all this, all the stuff that makes this thing tilt and everything. Landing gear, you can fly it with or without the landing gear. There's the props going on. Pretty simple construction. There's your heavy duty uh, servos there for your, uh, for your, uh, for tilting your, uh, your engine nacelles, your engine pods. And then they talk a little bit about vertically flying it, uh, flying it horizontally like an airplane, the rotation of the propeller. So there's there's some good detail in here, and, and we'll be talking about this. If not in this video during the setup, we'll also be talking about it um, while we're out there flying it. CG positions for setting this up. You know, we'll talk about that. There's a range, and here it talks about different ranges with different CG positions, where it balances and where it's more or less maneuverable. So we'll 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 discuss all this later. Mostly, we're going to unbox and build this thing, and then some of the some of the spare parts and stuff uh, on this thing. And there they are. So, and Banana Hobby is apparently going to have all sorts of parts for this thing. I am going to be linking this up, hopefully, guys. To the uh, the NX6, which I'll be talking about more uh, in some of these reviews that I'm that I'm doing. So we'll have this uh, set up on there. So without uh, any more further delay here, let's get all the parts out of here. Starting off with the main fuselage um, in this bag here, and then we've got some wheels down at the bottom. The landing gear just pops on and off, so you know you can fly this on the belly uh, and without the gear, or fly it with the gear. You know you can belly land it on grass and everything. So here's your spinners. Um, here's your main wing with engine pods. You can see this thing's pretty much uh, kind of all ready to all ready to go. You just sort of take it out of the bag. In fact, I'm going to slide that baby out of there right now. Let's get that out of there. Let's see how it all looks. It looks nice. Very, very cool. Very slick. I like that. And the pods kind of freewheel, but once you power them up, you know, they'll move where you need them to move and everything. So very cool. Again, folks, this is the first time I'm having this out of the box. I really have not flown one of these or really seen one of these until I'm just sort of cracking the, the box here. So, and then we've got the horizontal stabilizer. Let's get this out of the out of the bag. Everything's very nicely packaged. They did a, did a nice job there at uh, Banana Hobby. And, you know, these are all going to be under the Blitz RC Works brand still, which is their, pretty much their older brand. Um, their, their sort of traditional brand. And here's your horizontal stabilizer um, with your horn. So there is a horizontal stabilizer in this, probably for airplane flying, for, for forward flight. Then we've got your rudders here, your, your vertical stabilizers, I should say. I'm going to need some scissors for this because I'm going to tear these up if I don't if I don't use scissors. So let me go ahead and peel that away and see if we can get into this this way. I don't want to put too much stress on these. But the quality of the part seems very nice. It's, it's pretty, t they're pretty tough. So uh, real nice decal application. So let's get all these out of here. All these parts, oh, one's getting away. And then let's see, we'll get out of here. We've got propellers. And this is cool about this because these are the ones that have actually stripes on them and stuff. I don't think the military ones have the stripes on them. Here's some more parts here. 
And then here's epoxy glue I think they give you. And then here's a battery, folks. Um, I'll show you this really fast. Here's all the parts right here. Um, the, uh, the battery is not something I think that comes with the, uh, you know, the ARF version like I have. Um, but uh, I'll be using this and showing you this one as well. And they have lots of batteries, I guess, at Banana Hobbies as well. Um, this is kind of like their newer brand or their, I think their Blitz RC Works brand. And wow, actually this is sealed. Holy smokes, that's sealed up in there. Here, let me, uh, let me grab, uh, without cutting wires, <laughs> that's what you gotta be careful of here. You definitely don't wanna cut wires, so be careful kind of tearing that open. You don't cut any balance leads or anything like that, but let's get, uh, let's get that out of there. Brand new Blitz RC Works uh, pack, uh, 2200-4S. Uh, looks real nice. Looks like a 40C rated pack, so, you know, very cool. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, I'll lay out all the parts, guys. Uh, we'll get everything uh, together. Let's pull this out of the bag, actually. Let's get that out of there first. Let's pull this, uh, looks like there's just a little bit of, little bit of tape here at the bottom side of this thing. There we go. We'll pull this out. And then, yeah, it looks really nice. Holy smokes, very cool. All right, let's uh, lay out all the parts for everybody. We'll get them all organized, and we'll take a look close at everything in great detail. Okay, guys, here's the layout of all the parts uh, as they came out of the box. I pulled most everything out of the bags, except for mostly the props, because I don't want those to get confused. But up here at the top, we've got your, uh, your main fuselage, all painted, kind of ready to go. EDF in the tail for that stabilization slash lift fan and we've got your servo here for your elevator for airplane for you know straight line fixed wing mode uh, we got your uh, main wing here that really is the meat of the whole thing you got your motors speed controller engine to cells servos that rotate all of those um, your flaps and I believe these do function as ailerons as well um, and then your tail surfaces here your your horizontal stabilizer and elevator your vertical surfaces, which the vertical surfaces don't do anything. They just glue in and they act as stabilizers. That's really about it. Got your spinners, landing gear, some parts bags, and some glue. And that's the battery I'm going to use again. The battery, I think, only comes with the ready-to-fly version, um, not the uh, ARF like I'm, like I'm showing you here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of these bags open here and just show you the, uh, the landing gear on this thing. Um, nice foam wheels all the way around pretty much. And uh, we're gonna just the reason I pulled these out is because I actually want to I actually want to stick them onto the onto the airframe onto the fuselage and take a look at them. So there they are, just foam wheels, pretty simple. Press in, press out. So what we can do is just grab the fuselage and I'll actually I'm just gonna sort of install them real quick. It's pretty easy to see which the nose gear is, and honestly, I'm not sure if I'm putting that in forward or back. But the landing gear is not super critical on this. You can land and roll. There's no nose wheel steering or anything. Um, but um, you can land, you can roll with them a little bit, you can taxi just a little bit. Again, without nose wheel steering, but you can probably steer, I would imagine, with the, uh, the directional um, you know, control of the, uh, the two engine pods that you can you know, modulate or rotate side to side. Um, but here you go, man, that's, that's your landing gear and how it goes on there. I don't think there's really anything else other than that to it, so you can fly with the gear. You know, if you're taking off and landing on pavement and stuff and you want to taxi around a little bit, or you can pull them off. You know, and just, you know, belly land it on grass, you know, because it is a nice, nice flat belly to it overall. Finish looks really nice. It's shiny. This is the Coast Guard version again. You got the other four colors. The decals are, you know, really nicely applied. Check that out. Very, very cool. Very bright, very vibrant paint job. It's very shiny. Uh, and the thing is, is sometimes with these shiny paints, they're very flaky. But this doesn't really seem to be too flaky. It actually seems to be sticking, <laughs> adhering to the foam. Because the foam is soft and spongy, but sometimes the paint is brittle. But it doesn't seem to be that way. It seems to be, seems to be bonding really well. So up front here is the canopy, magnetic hatch, tongue and groove, pretty simple. They've already got your Velcro set up for your battery. Looks like they got the wrong side on here. This is the fuzzy side. Normally you have you know, the, the hook side or the rough side, and then the fuzzy parts on your battery. But, and I probably am gonna use Velcro on this one just because I don't wanna reinvent a whole battery floor for this. I could just glue in a floor down there and using some strap and shelf liner like I usually use, but that's just gonna add weight. So I will probably stick to the, uh, the Velcro on this for the battery. And then right here, you got magnets with wood around it and with strapping tape. So it's kinda nice how they did that, and it actually tongue and grooves in there you know, pretty darn nice. You can see all the way down to the fuselage to the back, even to the fan 
down the back of this thing. So, and then this just snaps right on. So, uh, decent fit and finish. Probably could be a little better, but not bad, you know. And then uh, right in here, you've got your. Uh, your, uh, your module, which is your flight stabilization board, I assume, that controls, you know, the, 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 the two engine nacelles and the tail and everything for the flight stabilization system that's in this. The wing is going to mount, as you can see here, there's just three screws. Uh, the two up front, I think, are machine. I think this one is self-tapping because I don't see a machine thread under here, but I could add one. But these, I can definitely see down in there, there's metal threads. It looks like there's a, a blind nut back behind these uh, wood pieces. And this is supported by wood, which is, you know, pretty cool. So we've got a Dean's connector on here. That goes to the front, again, where the battery goes. And then as we transition down to the back, you see the fan, that's the EDF fan. Again, this thing has three motors and three speed controllers in it, so it's pretty cool. Outrunner motor, which seems pretty, magnets seem pretty tight. And that's sort of your lift fan or your stabilization fan that's, you know, not quite scale to an Osprey, but it gives you the stability you need to fly this thing. So pretty, pretty neat all the way around. And uh, here's where your tail is gonna fit right on. And then on the underside of this thing, uh, let's see, we've got uh, we've got this hatch. Let me see if I can crack this open. I had this open once. It's interesting because this has like a beveled edge to it. You can see it's kind of angled, so it's kind of hard to get in there, but it also keeps it from falling out. It's a hatch cover that you're probably not going to need to move too much, but, you know, there's, there's the... Uh, there's the stabilization board in there, and um, you know these are all your plugins for your probably yeah. Well, let's flip it around the right way. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, and um, there really is no gear. So, uh, but we'll get this hooked up. I've never hooked one of these up, so we'll talk about that more as we kind of as I hook it up and we talk about it, and as we get out to the uh, the flying field with it. This is a little tricky to get on, folks, because again. It's got a beveled edge to it. You see the, uh, the beveling to it. So you kind of have to sort of squeeze it and bend it sort of almost to get it to get it to kind of go in there. And there may be a better trick to this I'll learn later. But again, you have to kind of squeeze it and get it in there. Like I said, it's meant to not really be able to come out easy so it doesn't fall probably out of the machine. But, you know, once you get it down in there, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much in there to stay. Looks like the toe is in on the wheel a little bit, so I'll probably put that on a vise and bend it straight so it's, it's a little more straight or a little more lined up with the fuselage. But uh, that's it, man. Pretty nice overall. And then the tail section, the tail section is pretty easy how that's going to go on. In fact, I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to go into that next because I'll show you how easy this thing, you know, really is to get together. Um, we're really just going to glue these on here. There's your verticals. Nice finish all the way around. Looks like they did a nice job. Again, um, a lot of times these uh, these shiny paints are very flaky, but this doesn't really seem to be. I guess some of it can come off, but it doesn't really seem to be. And I'm probably going to have to remove some of that to get these to stick together. But then again, these aren't real critical surfaces either. So, you know, who knows? I may just slap these on this time. So because um, they're not super, super critical for this. You know, mostly we'll be hovering, but yeah, we'll be, fin we'll be in forward flight a bit. So, and uh, that's it. You glue those on, and then here's your whole tail section. You have uh, a foam hinge back here, your horn. Your horn connects to your rod, uh, to your servo right there. And then with a bunch of glue here, again, we'll probably use um, packing tape to remove the paint here. We'll use packing tape um, to remove the paint on here and here around here so we get a good contact area because what we're going to do is just glue these glue these on it's a pretty simple you can see pretty simple glue assembly in fact once i stick this on there actually that's a very tight fit very nice very nice fit so it's it actually stays there on its own so i'll be using for sure some foam tack there and then all we have is a push rod to join your tail section together. So that's that's really it for the gluing on this thing is, is getting that together. The rest of this, this model just, uh, you know, it screws together. So very cool, very little gluing and probably up here, uh, probably up here flying around, you know, in no time. So, but let's take a look at this wing. This is it, this is the heart of the system here, aside from the module in there. Very nice, they have a very nice, um, kind of, I don't know if this is a sticker, oh no, that's plastic, that's a plastic, that's like a Lexan plastic leading edge, which is simulated, looks like a de-icing boot, because that's what normally those big edges are de-icing boots that either inflate or heat up to get ice off the wings of, of airplanes and stuff. And um, 
you can see your two engine nacelles, your big servos here. You probably don't want to, you know, torque these too much, but this is how they this is how they rotate. You really don't want to do too much of that, yeah, because you can strip that that servo in there. And uh, big wood bulkheads here, glued in with the output shaft. And and the reason for this Lexan is here's where your power wires go. Your power wires go through here, and this uh, here's where you connect everything. We gotta we gotta unhitch this. Um, uh, in fact, let me see if I can grab myself real quick. Hang on. I'm going to go off camera for two seconds. I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to try to grab myself a cutter here for everybody, a flush cutter. Sorry guys, I didn't realize this thing was tie wrapped. They got some, some maximum security going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip the tie wrap off of this baby. Get right on in there without pinching any wires. We definitely don't want to be cutting wires here, so we can kind of can screw up. So we'll snap that, get that off of there, and here's our wiring harness. Okay, so this is what's going to plug into your board. I noticed that there was a an RM, which is probably right motor, and there's probably an LM, which is your left motor, and there there it looks like they are. Um, yeah, they're set up and labeled, ready to go, so you can plug these in where you need to plug them into. And then I'm not sure what this one is. This one is AS, so that might be. Uh, oh, these are your these are your ailerons. Probably ailerons and flaps is probably what that is. And then one of these is for your your ESC. Yeah, one and one is the ESC for the rear fan, and the other. Well, I'm not sure what they are. One's for the fan in the back. One's for the. Um, oh, actually, these are the ESCs for the motors. One of these is for the elevator. One of these is for. Uh, uh, the fan in the back, one of them's for the these aileron and flap servos, so I'll, I'll get that all figured out a little later. I'll, we'll mess with that as we get to going with it, And uh, but you can see your servos in there, you know, for your flaps, and uh, just really nice all the way around. There's doublers here for your main screws to uh, to mount your, your wing on and everything, so really, really pretty neat. It looks like there is an access hatch. Let me see if I can turn this without doing any real harm to this thing. Just move it, if you move it, move it very slowly. But there is an access hatch. These are beveled the other way too so they don't just fall out. It's pretty, actually it's a pretty neat design. Actually, let me try to get this one out. Maybe this one's a little, this one's actually a little more cooperative here, but let me see if I can pop this one out. But you can see they're beveled. They actually have a beveled edge, so you can pop them in without needing to glue them necessarily, and they really should stay in there, but you can still access your speed controller in there. So let's see if I can get this end back in here. Maybe we have to push it in that way. That's how you kind of get it in there. Sort of push it in, get this end in first, kind of slide it a little bit, and then once this gets even, you should be able to pop, pop that in there. If we need a little dab of contact cement like there and there on the inside, then we can always cut it if we have to get it out. But you can see you got nice cooling in here, and you've got nice exit cooling here as well for your speed controller that's mounted in the nacelle for this thing to turn. And then we've got, you know, your main motor on this side, your left motor, and the right motor on on this side. Um, I can't stress enough, you know, be careful moving these around because you've got this huge output shaft and this big motor, this in the cell attached to this servo. So you don't want to move these things, you know, too abruptly because you can strip that servo easy if you're not, you know, being real careful with it. But this is cool, guys. Very nice. They got the danger jet intake stuff on there, intake exhaust. Flaps and ailerons ready to go. Very nice decal application. So, yeah, pretty darn awesome, folks. And then this is just going to go, when we go to get this thing together, as we put it together here in this thing, we're going to drop this thing right down on top of here and then put our screws in place. And then we'll make our wire connections and stuff. So that's, that's pretty straightforward, folks. And then some of the other parts here. Let's take a look at this. This is some of the prop blades. And uh, let me peel some of these off. They give you a six for each side it looks like so there's some spare props which is nice because we probably probably damaged some of these maybe but the reason i like the coast guard version of this thing is because it's got it's striped they got stripes on them i think the military ones are all black so this will really stand out if we do do some photographs you know those should stand out pretty pretty darn cool pretty pretty good so in, in photos and things and actually should make it more visible you know this white color you know, rather than, you know, having a gray, you know, which kind of disappears in some areas. So, but, but they're all look cool. I actually like that snow camouflage or that Arctic camo. So 
Um, but these are spinners, folks. These are just, you can see they have, they just have foam on the inside, EPO, and then these screw in, I think, through a single screw here, but these actually connect. Actually, I, I had that kind of backwards or kind of had that wrong in my thinking, but these, these actually, as I pull this out of here, these props just go right on there, and I think you just put a screw. So they will pivot. They actually have a lead lag, so you're not gonna lock them down. They're gonna kind of find their center point, um, and, and that's uh, kind of how it is. That's just how it, it operates. So we'll get the three of those on there and do that. And then um, let me throw this right back down on top of there. This is cool, I'm pumped. I'm totally pumped. Get back to the helicopter days of, uh, of my flying. And then it looks like they give you, yeah, here's a piece of Velcro for the battery again. Uh, I guess they didn't get the memo on this because this is the hook side, which is normally in the plane and then the loop side's on the other. So I'll reverse it or figure something out. And then you got a bag of screws. Looks like these are for, actually these, uh, these fiberglass pieces. This may even go over the top of the propellers to keep those in place. I'm betting that's what that's for. So the centrifugal force doesn't throw them out. That's my best guess. I haven't really looked at the instructions so much. But there's all our screws to get everything together. So pretty simple. Here's our push rod, you know, for our for our elevator right there in the back. And, um, and, and that's about it, folks. There is glue. They give you some epoxy. I may use it, because sometimes this epoxy is real strong. You just have to make sure if you're using some of this stuff, um, and they give you a little mixer with it too. Um, this is usually really tough stuff. You just gotta make sure that you you sand the foam a little bit so you're not glue, glue and glue to glue. And you, you basically take the closed cell of the EPO and you open it up just by scuffing it a bit and then epoxy actually will stick to it then. If you don't scuff the foam, uh, epoxy doesn't really stick to it all that well. So so pretty neat overall, folks. This is, uh, this is pretty darn impressive. Let me see if I can just pop the whole thing together just so we can get a kind of feel for it for size this is pretty pretty darn neat let me see how that um how that looks in there um it looks like a lot of this actually you know what this actually has to go through the front if i'm not mistaken let me just kind of angle that a little bit and you can see how i think that all goes through the front section right just like that and then this will go down on in place let's uh see if that'll fit and that is that's it guys that's how it goes together with three screws right there and that is that is it, folks. It's very, very cool how this, uh, how this, uh, how this goes together. So, anyway, guys, with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and do uh, just a brief assembly, and we'll get this thing together and show you how simple it is to 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 get this thing glued and, and screwed together. The first part I'm going to get together is the uh, the tail assembly, and you can glue this on again, like the instructions said, with CA. You can use epoxy. You can use uh, foam tack, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, and just to make sure everything bonds real well, you do want to make sure that you've got um, um, all of the paint off of these areas. Um, you can see here I went ahead and I removed some from here. This edge I haven't done yet, but anywhere where there's going to be contact surface area, it's a good idea to use um, some packing tape just to kind of get that all off of there. You can see how it kind of peels off. You can see it's bonded pretty well to this thing though. Um, but the more you can get off of there and the more you have you glue and foam to foam, uh, really the better off uh, you're going to be overall. Um, this whole back section here where this goes off, you definitely want to clean all the glue out of here, which there wasn't too much. And then same off of this whole area. Again, any surface that contacts, um, you know, it's going to contact each other. You want to get all that paint off so you're glue and foam to foam. For this assembly, I thought I would try something different. This is some new uh, Zappo foam safe uh, shockproof uh, CA for foam that I, I just got. I just went ahead and put a dropper on it. I thought, since there's no servos around here and stuff, I thought I'd give it a shot on gluing this together and see how this works. Because if this works out, I may start using some more foam safe um, CA. Because some of the off brand ones I've never been kind of blown away by. So, anyway, with this dropper on here, I'm going to go ahead and um, apply some. Uh, some thin CA in here and use this thing to spread it around thinly. These micro droppers are really nice. I actually get these at, at Graves RC Hobby uh, down the road here from us because they they have all these things. So if you can get you know if you can get droppers like this, you know these are these are like some of the best around. So with uh, with that all laid out, you know, kind of nice and thin on there using the using the stem of this thing to kind of spread it around thin. And and this stuff is not very very it's not very thick so it kind of it doesn't take up a huge you know gap and sometimes um, when you're using uh, foam tack or something foam tack and contact cement 
they use up a lot of space. So I figured, um, let me try this out because this is very thin stuff and it should bond this well together. So let's get another little bit on here and I think we're good to go. Let's see if we can get this, uh, get this in place and see how this does. We'll go ahead and we'll insert this very carefully and we'll just hold it in place and see how that does. It actually looks like it's going to make a pretty pretty clean bond on there overall. So, And there's really not much mess if you do it right and you put a thin layer because these are very precision parts. And sometimes you're using foam tack. As much as I love foam tack, um, it, it sometimes is harder to get in, in, in places that are very, very tight. So looks like that's bonded really well. We want to make sure that we have, you know, pretty much a perpendicular surface to our horizontal stabilizer and it looks like we got it on there. So I'll go ahead and do the next side and then we'll get the whole thing on. Okay guys, here's the finished part. Uh, I am definitely a big fan of the Zap Zappo Foam Safe CA. It, it just, it bonded this thing, these things together perfectly. Um, you know, no dripping. It's, it's not a super thin CA. It's like a little tiny bit thicker than that. Almost not even a gap filling, but just a little more than thin and it's just perfect. And holy smokes, no mess, no run, nothing. So uh, definitely a big fan. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the glue on this section, glue on here and uh, get the tail in place. Okay, folks, thanks to the uh, Zappo Foam Safe CA, our tail is on very speedy and uh, very neat and clean. So I got to say I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty impressed with how, how nicely it, uh, it actually went on. Next up really is the push rod. You have to grab your tail rod, you know, screw your, uh, your linkage onto it, and then go ahead and put it in place. Um, it's not 100% clear where it goes, but there is a larger hole kind of right here. So it's either going to go in this one right here, uh, or it's going to go in this one. And I'll talk about that a little more when we get to the flight demo. But something tells me it's probably supposed to be, probably supposed to be that one right there. You know, they made it, it looks like it was intentionally enlarged, so it would go in there. And then um, you go ahead and you attach your, uh, your clevis on here, and um, that pretty much uh, kind of sums it up or rounds it out, um, you know, for getting your, uh, your tail on there. I'll probably put a little piece of fuel tubing right around how, here to help keep that, uh, keep that keeper in place. The next step is just getting the main wing on with uh, three screws. Notice they are self-tapping. I had indicated uh, that those were machine earlier on, but actually they're not. There's just washers in there. So, you know, these things are going to screw into wood, you know, through these uh, three doublers here. So um, really all there is to it is, is just, you know, throwing your, putting your wires, feed them through this middle section here. And they have a very nice, they actually very nicely wired and bundled this whole thing. That all goes right in there. And um, we'll get our, uh, get our wing down in place. And then we're going to put all three in. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in here. I already did the front two, and I, I actually filled them up with a little bit of CA, and I'll show you this real quick. The trick to this is, is you want to make sure you get all three of these in, tap your, your screw like you can see here, into the wood. And then once you get it down where you, know, you feel like it's tight enough, you can feel it uh, lock it in, which it feels like it is now, it's just starting to compress that plastic uh, doubler, that plastic washer there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it out. And this is what you wanna do to all of your, all of your wood threads. And actually in the future, I may replace this one in particular with a blind nut on the other side and use a machine screw instead. But what you do is you pull this thing off of here. Now with all three of these things, um, which I had already done, we actually have threads in here now. There's actually threads that have threaded you know, through that, uh, through that wood right there. But what we want to do is we want to solidify it and make those thre threads tougher. So the way we do that is we do that with some CA. Now you have to use uh, foam safe CA because this thing is foam mostly. Not on this part in particular, but mostly you need to have, you need to have CA that's watery. The super, super thin, like water stuff, okay? Because what you want to do is saturate, um, you want to saturate the hole, which I'm going to show you all right here as we put a couple drops in there it's going to fill the wood is going to absorb that glue like a sponge and maybe even fill the hole a bit and let the wood absorb that i'll often use the tip of this thing just to make sure it gets down into that hole fully and then we want to let it just soak in because what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to soak into those threads the wood's going to absorb it and now you're going to have much tougher threads instead of just wood threads because if you take the wing on and off a lot 
you're going to wear out these threads quite a bit. So you want to make sure the wood is not, you know, there's not completely saturated with, 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 um, with uh, in other words, you don't want a whole, you know, kind of lake full of glue in there because it'll block the hole. So don't block the hole with the glue. But once this dries, you'll now have some pretty tough threads. So you can screw your wing into here and you don't have to worry about, you know, wearing out the wood threads. Now, once your glue has dried for all three of these holes and you want to make sure that you let it sit let it thoroughly dry. Use a little kicker on it or something just to kind of accelerate it. Then you're ready to put this thing uh, down in place. I already did a test fit of this real quick so my screws are kind of kind of hanging out here of it and what we're going to do is just drop the wing right on top here. Make sure your wires are down in place and this whole thing fits on there you know pretty pretty darn well uh, and then all your screws go in and we will tighten everything down. Okay, folks, once we get everything tightened down here and you can feel it start to grab those glued threads and you can really kind of feel it in there and you'll see some compressing here in this foam. Once you've reached that point, you've, you've kind of reached the, uh, the limit of it of how far it's going to go down. Any more, you'll start really stripping those threads. The glue just really helps out with that. Uh, next step is we're just going to flip this thing upside down and pull the wires through. Now, I kind of did this in advance already. It wasn't really hard to do, but you know, you just have to make sure you pull everything through. I'm going to pull this a little tighter to the camera here. We'll get down in on what's going on here, and we'll see everything kind of sticking out of here. And it looks like kind of a big old mess, but it's really not. I'll put this thing into a little bit of a bank. These stands are some of the nicest stands around, so you know, be sure to check those out in the links uh, below and we'll see uh, see what this all looks like. Now all your wire bundle, this looks kind of complicated, but it's really not. It's pretty simple. I have a receiver set up. I'm just going to use a, a six channel here because we only need five channels. Um, your wires come through, your bundle of wires that comes through the, from the wing is just right here. And then here's your main junction box. And we're just going to really plug everything in um, just via the, uh, the, the markings on them it should be pretty pretty straightforward. So you've got your right motor and your left motor, so we've got those uh, connections here. So I'll kind of distinguish where those are, LM and LM, just those just plug in uh, together here. We'll snap those in place. Make sure the polarity looks good to you, and it should be black to black, red to red, white to white. That's our left motor. And then uh, we've got our right motor here. Um, let me make sure that the, I'm looking down there at some of those wires, making sure everything is where it's supposed to be. See that one says RM on it, and this one here says um, RM. So we'll take the two of those and we'll stick those uh, together as well. Um, plugging that in, very nice positive contact, so those are all in place. Again, check the polarity, black to black, red to red, white to white. So that's your left and right motor, that's pretty simple. I'm going to try and put these wires out of here under confusion here. Also, if you have contacts in here, just like, um, you know, check my quick tips thing. If you have to tighten these two contacts, undo these and, uh, and, and do a tightening of the connection. If you have to undo these, do a connection, you know, a tightening of those. All these servo leads can be connected, so check that in my quick tips section uh, of my uh, channel and, and that'll be there for you. Um, and then everything else kind of just sort of plugs in the way it's supposed to go in. You got you got LR and RR, so right, right, uh, right and left. Uh, let's uh, put these all where they go. And um, what that stands for is, uh, is, is right, and it's all labeled pretty nicely. In fact, you know what? I'm going to spin this the other way because this part, oops, just banged mine a cell, not a good thing to do. Um, this is all labeled actually pretty darn nicely. I'll try to get in a little closer on this so everybody can, can really see how this, how this thing looks here. We'll get in on that. And uh, you can see how everything's nicely labeled. You can see we've got aileron servo, right rotor, left rotor, left rotor and right rotor. So, you know, your aileron, which is gonna be this one here. You can see everything's labeled nicely, AS. That's gonna go right into here. That's for your ailerons. Those are Y-harnessed servos, and you can see that yeah, it is on a Y-harness, and that's what we got there. Um, and then these two right here, again, one's right rotor, one's left rotor. Those go right into here. So I'll get the left one in here first. Let's uh, get that where it's supposed to go, down in there, easily. Again, this one's the right one. We'll get that one in there nicely so as you can see it looks complicated but it's not it's actually pretty darn simple so you get those in there and uh, you know 
we're good to go. That's really it for the primary um, wi wiring. We've got, this is the motor wire, the battery wire. That one goes all the way up to the, to the cockpit, so we're good to go there. And that's it. Everything's ready to go now except for just the, the receiver wire. So it's, it's pretty clean how they have this wired and pretty simple that like really anybody could get this thing together. So you just got to figure out which ones of these are which because they really didn't label these. So what I'll do is, is this one is the aileron. Um, and you can see here by the label because they're not labeled on here. But that's easy enough to read. The aileron, I will go ahead and I'll plug that uh, you know, into, the, uh, into the aileron channel. You see we got the aileron going in there. And then I'll just go on down the line as I'm looking uh, right down here. The next one is the uh, elevator, which is going to go right up here above that. And the next one down is going to be throttle. So we'll take that one, plug that into the throttle one. And uh, this looks uh, easier than it is, but doing this with a camera, guys, is actually fairly tough. It is an additional handicap getting this stuff in there. Next one's down is rudder. So you can see they've made this really uh, really simple to, to do this. So we'll get the rudder in there, put that in place, push that in. These are nice and tight because I tightened all my connections so everything's, everything's pretty secure. And then gear. I'm not sure where the gear goes so I'll get into the manual but let me put it into the gear switch and see maybe that's uh, where they have it set up to be and then we'll talk about that later if that needs a change but that's really it folks for, uh, for getting the wiring set up and you can see it's they've got it set up so it's really simple that really anybody could get the wiring done on this in just a couple of minutes. Last but not least is installing the uh, the rotors and the uh, and the spinners. You want to make sure that the descending blade is on the outer side, okay, of the um, of the uh, of the wing. So and that's clearly shown here in this picture. Again, descending blade on the outer side. I don't really know why. That's just I guess how tilt rotors fly and how this thing is set up and designed to go. So I already put one side on along with the spinner here so we could take a look at it. You want to leave a certain amount of movement so these can kind of lead and lag and find their, their proper track as they, as, as they spin. And I'll talk more about that as we get you know, to fly in this thing. They may need to be looser or tighter. That's how we did it with helicopters kind of back in the day when I was flying them a lot. Um, and it's probably similar with this. So since I got one side on, we'll flip to the other side. And let me get this thing straight. We'll go to the other rotor and we'll get this one on and we'll kind of talk about how that goes in place. It's pretty simple. You want to be careful as you're turning this nacelle. These are designed to go forward and back because that's how this thing's going to fly. They're going to constantly move, but you want to be careful moving this nacelle too much because you could strip your servos by moving it from this side. So you just want to be really kind of cautious with that. Um, I've got the spinner right here that wants to roll off. I don't think that's going to want to stay there, but yeah, it doesn't want to stay there. Let's get uh, our rotor blades and it really is Folks, just this simple, and I am going to point out that it's kind of idiot proof here. That's your right rotor. They're all labeled right or left, so you can't really can't really get this wrong. And all you're going to really do is just you know put each one of these rotors down in place, and they'll just literally just sit on place like that. It's just that just that simple thing to put it on. Now, what I didn't see in the manual, and maybe I didn't read it thoroughly enough, is there's this fiberglass ring that they have included with this, and I can only assume that this was added later for structural support to this. This just goes right over the top here, right over the outside. Um, it probably doesn't matter exactly which way you put it. And then there's three screws, and screw the three screws, as you can see here, um, these have a little tooth kind of in the end or a bite, so they tap into the plastic better. So, you know, we're just going to drop those down in there. So this, I believe, is a structural, we'll find out when we fly it, really just a structural ring. Uh, maybe they were having problems with these things breaking off early on, so they, they came up with this little ring to put on there, and, and uh, that should make it tougher. So I'll go ahead and start very carefully just tightening these down and you should feel those are pretty steep threads so you know we should we should f be able to feel that you know biting down into the plastic and we don't want to over tighten that's for sure we'll, uh, we'll we'll mess with this a little more as we get you know to fly in this and finding out exactly where they should be because um, you generally speaking you want to have rotors that are fairly, that are tight enough, but that you want them to have a little movement, a little lead and lag, but you don't want to have them, to flop, you don't want to have them flopping around, because if they're flopping around, they lead and lag too much. So you want to have them tight enough, uh, but also a little loose enough so they move. And again, I'll speak more to this 
you know, as we fly this thing more and I kind of figure out this craft a little bit, because there's going to be a little learning curve probably with it and what it needs, what it likes, what it doesn't like, and whether these lead or lag and so forth. So there you can see, again, descending blade on the outside, and they look like they went on real nice. So pretty, pretty darn simple. And then we've got our spinner. You'll also notice in the manual that the spinner shows like a foam spinner. Clearly they were probably having problems with that, so they made a plastic one, put foam on the inside, and there's just a single screw that, uh, that goes through the middle, and that's really all it is. I'm gonna drop that right down in there. I'm gonna take my screwdriver. Actually, I need a larger screwdriver. That one's way too big for that one. And uh, I'll get that down in place. I'll get that kind of biting onto the screw. You can see we're turning it there, and then I'm just gonna put this right on top. The instructions say, Whatever you do, don't over tighten this thing. So make sure it locks in place. You can feel it going down. And then when we feel it bite, I'm gonna line these little, uh, these kind of nacelle sections here, these pins up with the rotor blades. I'm assuming that's just some kind of scale effect. And you wanna tighten it, but don't over tighten it because you could probably strip those threads really easily. And, uh, and that's about it, folks. That's, that's it for getting your rotor blades on. You can see how easily some of these things will flop kind of out of your way and you just want to be careful when you're moving it that you don't jerk it too much and uh, and strip those servos but overall you know pretty easy to get your uh, get pretty easy to get your rotor blades in place now the next step is really just to bind everything up so I'm gonna go ahead and put a, uh, a bind plug in here and get everything ready to go you do want to get into your uh, model memory of your radio and you want to go ahead on the DX6 here, or the sorry, the NX6, which is what we're using on the new uh, binding here, is uh, go ahead and label it. Uh, I put Blitz RCV22 Osprey uh, 4S, so I know what it is. And then we're really going to bind it like an airplane because that's pretty much the mode that it's. I think it's set up to go in. So. Once the bind plug is in place, what we're going to do is power everything up. I took the power wire, I just pulled it from the front fuselage section here just so we could kind of do this all together nicely. Now you can bind it this way, but you can't boot up power and initialize the flight stabilization until this thing is upright. It just won't acknowledge anything unless the plane is sitting on the ground. But for now, we can bind it up this way just so everybody can see it. So what we'll do is I'm going to power my radio down, get that thing shut off by holding that button and letting it power down. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the battery here. We can see our light right here flashing in here. And then by pressing and holding our bind button and turning our power on and letting it boot up, we can let it go ahead and go through its bind. DSMX, 22 milliseconds. Bind complete. There we go. And there's a flashing light in there. It's hard to see. It's right in the middle there. And it went steady because I'm just binding this up on my, uh, my uh, six-channel receiver. So we are all completed. Everything's all bound up. We can go ahead and pull our bind plug in and out. And half of the controls really aren't going to work right now because I have the model upside down. That's what's weird about it is it, or not really weird, but, but uh, it's a caveat to it where this thing needs to be upright when you actually initialize and bind everything up. So, um, also, notice my engine pods, <laughs> okay? I took my props off this thing. You definitely want to take your props off, you know, prior to binding this thing, because you got two rotors that can start spinning and all kinds of stuff. So, until you get the model set up and initialized, you know, get your props off, do the binding, and then get the setup done, and when you're ready to fly, we'll put the props back on. With the binding complete, I decided to uh, tidy up the inside a little bit, put a little Velcro on that sidewall for my receiver and just tacked it there with the Velcro to the sidewall with my, uh, my front antenna going forward to back. My side antenna, you can see where I have that mounted right in here, just ran a piece of 3M Blenderm tape around here. So that's now perpendicular to the, uh, to the main antenna that you can actually now see right through there. So that's all tucked away and I, I did, did it that way really to get it away from the electronics as much as possible. So minimize signal loss a little bit there by uh, having them 90 degrees and having them away from to each other and having them away from all this stuff. Then the power wires that actually came in through the top, through the wing there, through here, I actually routed those just through here and made all those connections here. Same thing for the tail uh, um, ESC as well. So those are kind of off to this side in a way and then I rerouted or just put the, the front main power wire to the front again. And you can see it's it's pretty neat in there. It's a very neat installation, but this way it just kind of secures the wires and get things out of it gets things out of place. 
out, out of the way and, and nice and organized. Also, way back in there, you can see speed controller buried way back in there, and it's flopping around a bit, so I'll probably secure that later. Same thing, this is the elevator wire. Uh, that's probably okay, but I'll probably find a way maybe later if I can get in there to secure that secure that ESC or just Velcro it somewhere so it's not, not moving around so much. But once this is all done, we can put our hatch back on. I'll go ahead and secure this in place. Again, it's beveled. It's really neat how both sides are at an angle right here. So it actually is designed to fit in. It's a little bit of a tight fit. We're probably not going to be going in there all that much, but by squeezing it together a little bit, you kind of get that, you kind of get that lip in there just a bit. Put that front end in first, or the back end in first, I should say. Then you can kind of squeeze these together. And it fits in there without any glue. Now, it may come off in the future, but it's really, again, the edges are beveled, so it, it kind of stays in there nicely, I, I think. So we'll see how it goes along, you know, how that works out as we, uh, as we fly it. But in the meantime, I think what we're going to do here is we're going we're gonna to bind this up. I'm going to reach in here and grab this, uh, grab this power cord, which is kind of elusive here. Where is that darn thing? It's, there we go. It's routed up front. We'll get our battery there. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up, and we'll kind of watch the, uh, the initialization of everything when it's upright, because just like most uh, gyro systems, you know, you got to have it you got to have it level on the ground in order to, you know, get everything booted up properly. So, uh, so with that, let's go ahead and turn our turn our radio on. We'll just press that, start it up on our NX6. Let it get powered up. It looks good. And then we'll go ahead and plug, just plug everything in. Uh, again, with the props off, folks. So we'll get that plugged in and let it initialize. And let's see what it does. It looks like it's set up and going. There's our motors kind of calibrating themselves, knowing what position everything's in. And then uh, we'll do sort of a, a flight control sort of check with everything and make sure everything's kind of doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we should have forward, but we're having back. We should be having back, but we're having forward on the motor. So we'll probably have to reverse that. Notice our elevator is not working right now because it's in hover mode. It's in, it's in copter mode. So we don't really need the elevator to work. So, um, and then we'll check right and left of their ailerons. They're working okay. Um, and then also our yaw control. Okay, and that's what's turning us and making us uh, making us yaw. So, so we got our roll control with our ailerons, which again we're not going to be doing much of that. There may be when we're in hover mode. There may be some speed controlling going on between the two to bank this thing, but I won't know really till till I actually fly it. But uh, yaw control's working, we know. Um, it's probably working in the wrong direction. But let's try ahead, try our landing gear switch, which is what our tilt rotors are set up to be. So I, I think of it gear down right now as in the landing configuration, because this is how we're probably going to land this thing. And then we'll flip the switch, and we can see our motor's going into airplane mode. So as now we're in airplane mode, we'll notice here that we've got aileron control. Now we have elevator. And of course, our elevator's backwards, just like our our tilting and our pitching was and everything. So you all control, there really isn't any on this thing, so in airplane mode, so we really don't don't need that so much. But it looks like we gotta reverse our elevator. So I'm gonna go into a servo setup. Let's go into reverse mode, which is right there. Clearly we have to reverse our elevator. So let's do that, and then we'll back on out of here. And let's see where we're at. Looks like, do we have up elevator, down elevator? That looks good. Let's go ahead and cycle our um, our landing gear switch, which again, that's going to be our switch, which is going to take us from forward flight to hover, hover to forward flight, that sort of thing. And uh, now let's see what we have. The elevator disengages, but now we have tilt rotors going forward, tilt rotors going back, and this should be right for roll, left for roll, which again, may have some speed control differences for the motors. I'm not sure yet, because I hadn't flown this yet. And then our yaw control, it looks like that's making us yaw right, and that's making us yaw left. So everything seems to be working okay, folks, and uh, we should have some stabilization going on. I'll, um, I'll, uh, let's see if we can power this up a bit. Looks like we're getting the motor spinning, or we're getting one spinning. We probably have to run through actually a calibration to get this to work, but what I am gonna do is try right now to set a throttle cut in here. So I'm gonna make this my throttle cut like I usually do. I'll activate that switch, and it's telling me right now it's the elevator stick, but we're gonna flip the switch and turn it into switch G, I believe is what that uh, is. Yep, right on there. And uh, so then we're gonna go down uh, one, uh, one notch down to here, 
and I'm gonna go and see if I have throttle right now, which I still do. So what I want is, is I wanna take positions one, zero and one to be off and two to be on because I always fly in this position. So you can see I have, or actually let me go the other way. I did that wrong. Um, let's flip this to, uh, let's power up here a little bit. Now we're not getting anything. I think that's the white mode is what I need to do. I think I did that backwards. So, um, so as we power up, I have power now because position two is, is, um, is, is my up position where I, I normally fly. But if I go to any other position, you can see now it doesn't work because you have that little tiny dot underneath there that tells you that that's the position of the switch. So in my lower positions, no throttle, no throttle, but in my flying mode, I have power. So that's really it, folks, to make sure your flight controllers are doing the right thing. Now that the Osprey is all bound up and ready to go, there's a few pre-flight items they talk about here, and I'll get into more of this, you know, when we actually fly the airplane. One thing it does show here is, remember to initialize the model on a flat, hard level surface, um, like a hard floor. Soft surfaces like grass could quite not be level and could cause, you know, kind of some issues with initializing. And then also, there's a flight control board calibration and throttle calibration check. And it says, when you've powered on your transmitter and plugged the V22 flight battery, flip your nacelle transition switch VTOL to forward uh, uh, to forward flight quickly up to 12, 10 to 12 times. It says do not wait for the nacelles to reach their full um, down or full up position. This is a calibration only. It says flip in a quick up, down, up, down, up, down um, about 10 times and then stop and wait. It says you should see the ailerons deflect in one direction. Possibly the cell, nacelles may perform the same uh, as well as the motors uh, uh, may initialize quickly. This is to facilitate uh, flight control calibration. Uh, this will indicate flight control calibration, okay, to watch that happen. So it says if you do not see the motors, uh, uh, the, the motion stated above, perform the nacelle uh, switch uh, flips again until you see the results. Uh, this is a crucial in step to ensure that your V22 will transition smoothly. Uh, be sure to transfer fr transition from VTOL to forward flight in a headwind, okay, and plenty of altitudes. The next thing we're going to do is plug it in and get it going. I went ahead and just put the Velcro on the bottom of this battery. I'm not a fan of Velcro, but this is a different model, and if I adjust the battery floor later or put something new in, we'll talk about that in a future video. So, um, so I don't add too much weight to the model or anything. So for now, let me just get it going in the stock configuration. We'll go ahead and get that on. And notice my nacelles are up. We want it in the hover mode when we're booting this thing up. Notice the props are not on it. You definitely want them off this thing when you're first testing it out. I got my throttle on so it's active. And uh, my landing gear here switch, which is actually, as you know, this is the, the switch that controls the motor tilt. I have it in the landing mode. This is the, uh, the forward flight mode, but down is down for the landing gear mode or the uh, hover mode is what I'm going to call it. And uh, we're ready to uh, kind of initialize everything. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in and leave it there for a good 30 seconds. Here we go. There we go. There it is. And let it calibrate. It's going to take a few seconds to do. There we go. It's calibrating. You'll see some of the flight controls move a little bit. You might hear some movement, but just leave it there for like a solid, you know, 30 or so seconds to make sure it's done calibrating, make sure it's done doing everything that it wants to do. And uh, we'll just kind of let it sit there for a little while longer. Again, don't be in a rush to get this thing in the air. Let it neutralize. Sometimes I've seen the ailerons off and things, but, and then sometimes they'll return to center. So what I'm gonna do here is just do a quick control check Make sure we've got elevator control. So this is forward, this is back, um, um, this is right aileron, left aileron, and we want to check our yaw. Make sure it's going left, make sure it's going right, and then um, we're not going to have any elevator control. Notice we have elevator on the tilt rotors, but no elevator control back there. Of course, when it's like this, we're going to want to neutralize our control surfaces, our ailerons, our elevator, make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Now, to test the tilting mode, I'm going to go ahead and take my landing gear and put the gear up in the up position, and that's going to be basically my forward flight that we're going to want to do at high altitudes and, and you know, move it along forward when we, when we make that transition from hovered to forward flight. So let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and flip that, and we'll transition everything. Notice, notice the elevator just came active and our nacelles are going down, okay? So now I should have aileron control in the proper direction, elevator in the proper direction, and um, I'm probably still gonna have, obviously I'm gonna have some throttle here, but also I noticed something else from some of the prior videos of this is, 
my engine nacelles are not lining up with these fairings. Now, I don't know if that's correct or not, but that might be something that they later changed in this model to give it a little bit more higher angle on those motors for when you're in forward flight. So I'm going to leave that as is because it would take a lot of messing around um, with the Allen bolts that hold those up uh, uh, with the servos that actually you know rotate these things back and forth. So I don't want to I don't want to mess with all that too much. Um, what I'm going to do is rotate the motors back up. And this is just some pre-flight check stuff before I actually fly it and see it, make sure it's, it's doing all the things that it's actually uh, supposed to do. So um, it should be pretty much initialized now, but what I am going to do is run through this that we just talked about as far as, you know, how you calibrate this thing. So what it says to do is take your motor switch and flip it like 10 to 12 times without letting it reach its limit and then let it calibrate itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for everybody right now. I'm actually going to get off, off the ground and do this while I got, uh, well, you guys can see the switch position of this. So here we go. We're going to let it cycle and I'm going to hit the switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, a bunch of times, and then I'm going to end up in the upright mode. Let's watch what it does now. That's one check, and it may do it again. Or it may not. That may be it. That may be all it had to do. Now, to be on the safe side, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to flip the switch and I'm going to do it several times just to see what it does. Because I've done it a couple, done, did it once before and it did it like twice. So let's watch it calibrate. There we go. And it may do it a second time. There we go. So sometimes it seems like it does it twice, but don't be in a rush again to get this in the air. Make sure you have it calibrated properly. Make sure it seems to be doing what it's doing. And again, I'll talk more about this as I fly it because heck, at this point in the stage of the game of the video, even though there might be some flying on this video, I hadn't even flown this thing yet. So we'll see what it does. So anyway, we've got our forward stick, back stick, right stick, left. We've got our yaw control. Everything seems to be working. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check my throttle. Make sure we have power coming up. Now, when I first saw one side come up, you got to remember, for roll control, this thing actually adjusts the speed. So when you pick this up, you're looking to see, does the other side come on? Does the other side shut down? It's, it's constantly it's constantly trying to level itself. So as, the, air, as the, the, the plane banks left and right, okay, it's adjusting the speed of the two of these. As it pitches up and down, it's varying the speed of the lift fan in the tail. So let's look at that again. And it's, you may hear me while this is going on, you may not, but that's just a little bit of throttle. And you can see side to side, the throttle varies. When I pitch up and down, it is, what it's doing is it's adjusting the speed between that lift fan and these two for pitch control up and down. That's the stabilization function that's working and doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then right to left, it varies the speed of the two of these. And then also in one more instance, notice what it's doing to the motors. If the thing yaws, it's actually adjusting each engine in the cell to yaw the thing back in the correct direction. Now, uh, one thing I do want to note in my radio, especially as I set this up, um, I also did notice that when I did the servo setup, uh, I did have to, um, and we'll talk about this as we get more into things, I had to reverse uh, my aileron, my elevator, and my rudder to make sure everything was going in the proper direction. So be sure, depending on your radio, you know, it could be, um, it could be different for y'all. You know, it all just depends on um, you know, what your, your setting is or what your radio is. It could be slightly different for yours. So you just have to make sure that when you're pitching, when the machine is pitching forward, that what happens is, is these are actually, um, what's going to happen is these aren't really going to angle, but the speed is going to change. So as I apply a little bit of power, let's give it just a little bit. Okay, we hear a variation between the speed of these and the speed of that fan in the back. And when we're banking, mostly what we're hearing there is a variation in the two of these. And then when we're yawing, we're looking for a difference in the, in the nacelles 
and the angle at which they're turning, okay? So you have to make sure that it's going in the proper direction. So as I yaw this thing in this direction, I'm watching one of these nacelles, and it should be moving that way to make sure to counteract a movement in, the, in this direction. So it should be moving opposite, which it is. Same thing with the pitch, and we'll hear that in the fan, and same thing with the, uh, with the elevator, when you see the elevator going up. Uh, or the nose going down, the elevator's going up, nose go up, goes up, elevator goes down, and, and so forth. Ailerons, same thing. We're getting a bank, it's trying to level it. We get a bank this way, it's trying to level it. So you want to really check all these things out. And once we're done with all this, we probably, you know, should be just about ready to take this out to the flying field and uh, get it outside and uh, put it into a hover and fly it around without, uh, you know, without too much problem. Lastly, folks, one more item of setup I wanted to talk about is the CG, and they show a CG range position between 5 and 30 millimeters, um, um, and that's from the center axle, this, this drive axle that rotates the engine to cell, uh, on that spot or aft of uh, 30 millimeters of it. So it says 5 millimeters behind it to 30 millimeters behind it is where the CG range, uh, where they say that it, uh, it should be. So I guess it's either on that or between uh, 5 and 30 after that. That's kind of a little confusing, but 5, 15, and 30, it talks about those, those ranges of CG and what the characteristics are and how it should fly there. I'll evaluate that as I fly it. And for now, just for my own you know, testing out there as I'm out there flying it, here's what I'm gonna do. I went ahead and I marked those. I went ahead and put uh, 30 millimeters 15 millimeters indicated by the blue one and then right on that axle shaft right now it seems to be balancing about right on the 15 maybe just a little ahead of that so and I can do that simply by just just taking just taking my fingers right here and just very carefully just balancing it on there and making sure that it balances where it's supposed to be of course with the battery in it and so forth but with that folks um, that about wraps it up for about for most of the uh, the, uh, the setup the trimming and the tuning of at least what I can do um, on the bench before getting it out to actually fly it. Okay guys, that pretty much uh, concludes the, uh, the review I have on this um, really nice V22 Osprey coming from Banana Hobby. Check it out in the links in the description below. I'll put it down there. Again guys, this thing comes in four colors. It's really nice. It's a nice sizable model. I'll have some upgrades and things for you guys coming here in the next couple of videos. And we'll get it out there to fly. And if I, I might have flown it by the time I finish editing this video. So there's probably some flying clips in the beginning and in the end of this. But look at the size of this thing. It's a nice size model this Coast Guard one really sticks out well I really like the stripes on the top of the props it really makes it's gonna stand out so we'll try to get some pictures of this thing uh, as well um, something else to note too while I was putting this together um, I did find out that um, I got two sets of props in this but normally there's just one set of props you get one for the uh, three for the right three for the left so if you guys want a spare set of props, it is an extra item. It's not something that's included. Same thing with the battery. The battery that came in this, um, I think they, it was a leftover from the uh, ready to fly version. So the ready to fly does have a battery in it. Uh, I'm not sure which one, but but uh, but that that's something that's not included in the ARF. But this is this is the ARF band, and it's really nice. It's it stands out well. It's a nice big size. I'm just impressed that we can fly a vertical and takeoff landing model. You know, this has three. Um, three motors. It's got the lift fan in the back. Um, it's got three motors and three speed controllers. There's a lot of bang for the buck. Um, you can fly without the landing gear on it and just kind of, you know, so it looks like it's uh, the landing gear is retracted. But super nice model, folks. This is the Blitz RC Works brand there coming from Banana Hobby. And stay tuned, folks. We're going to have more stuff coming from Banana Hobby. They got some really nice models. Uh, Banana's making a comeback, guys. So, you know, be sure to check out the links below. Check out Banana Hobby. I'll put those links below because they're making a comeback. They got some cool airplanes coming. And they have an all new staff there now, folks. They've, uh, they've actually gotten an all new crew. They're basically under new management now essentially and uh, I, I think there's going to be some cool things definitely coming from them and we'll have them here on the channel so stay tuned and check it out guys be back here this thing uh, did a nice bind up with the uh, NS NX6 um, I did find that the glue I'm using the Zappo foam safe let me get that close this is the first time I've used it I usually don't use foam safe CA but this stuff to me is superior than to some of the sort of the no-name brands for sure. So, you know, check this out at your local hobby shop or if you guys need some, let me know and I'll I'll try to put a link to it at the bottom if I kind of remember to do so because I'm always busy kind of getting all the links and stuff together. But you know, super nice model guys. We do appreciate you watching. Come back, we're gonna have more stuff. 
Um, uh, also, check us out on Instagram, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you guys are liking what you're seeing here. When new videos come out, you guys will be the first to get it if you hit that notification bell in the lower right-hand corner. And please, 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 if nothing else, guys, um, if you like the video, hit the like button. That thumbs up, that like thumbs up thing, uh, is uh, if you click on any any of our videos when you like them. I recently learned that it's the YouTube al YouTube algorithm that actually uses that like to determine to sort of send it out and propagate it to more people. So that really helps us out to even get more subscribers. So anyway, guys, we do appreciate you watching. Once again, check it out, guys. At Banana Hobby Blitz RC Works V22 Osprey four cell powered, really nice model. And uh, stay tuned for the flight video coming in. It'll be here in the upper right-hand corner once we get it up and going. And we'll do probably several flights on this thing. So anyway, guys, once again, appreciate you guys watching RC Informer. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time.